everyone and welcome to season 3 of Travel Stories with Mosh. Every episode, I will share travel stories from many fellow travel lovers who will take us on fascinating journeys around the world. Together, we hope to entertain and inspire you to explore the world in new and exciting ways and hopefully remind you of some of your own great travel experiences. On this episode of the new season, I have with me someone who has made history as the first female Arab to climb all the seven summits. Raha Muharak is an adventurer, an explorer, a travel presenter and an inspiration to many young women in Saudi Arabia. On this episode of the podcast, we dive into many adventures with Raha and find out what's so special about climbing mountains. So Raha, 82 countries as you just corrected me. So <laughs> Slowly collecting them. Yeah, okay, that's great because I was going to say 80 countries. Yeah. And Last I, year I had a few as okay. well. Okay, so 82 countries, 82. as you just corrected me. So what is this curiosity of yours to travel the world all the time? I think it, it started, my parents bought an encyclopedia set. Okay. You remember those really big yeah, leather? Back in the day? Back in the day. Yeah. And they were A, B, C, D. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And that arrived and it was in the library and i remember i was i would take one letter and finish like go through the letter mm -hmm. look at the what what is what is this letter and mm -hmm. many of them talked about countries mm -hmm. and that's when i started to realize how big and vast the world is that mm -hmm. was before the internet of course mm -hmm. again i'm giving my age away <laughs> but it it really made me look at the world in a way as a child and it, i've continuously looked at the world like a curious child mm -hmm. continuously it's my motto to live curiously so it developed very, very early and I never, I never got over it. I never ever got over that. Which sense. is fantastic, yeah. right? Because if you're not curious, you stop learning. And, and then, then you stop learning, you stop discovering, you stop exactly. uh, developing. You stop. I feel like curiosity is such a gift given to us as children, mm -hmm. but not many people hold on to it right. as they become adults. So true. So it, you true. become so mundane and so jaded and so, you know, in the monotonous route of mm -hmm. things that curiosity slowly fades away and goes into the background and yeah. I think that's that's a tool and that's a that's a bit of magic that people lose so I wanted to hold on to it amazing so you know you climbed Everest for the first time yes. in 2013 and uh, you did it again now in 2023 I wish it was to the summit no we went to base camp just to celebrate okay but it was still massive but it was still massive yeah. but what was this need that you felt that you wanted to do it again why is Everest so fascinating to I you? love this question why I wanted to go back I wanted to celebrate it in a in a unique way mm -hmm. and I didn't go back alone mm -hmm. I wanted to go back with a purpose mm -hmm. so I had an amazing competition with Adidas where we opened it up for the whole world and two women won the spot to come with me to Everest Base Camp so I mentored them and I helped them start their own career in mountaineering. So I wanted to go back with a purpose and something that was bigger than me. Because when I started climbing, I didn't have sponsors. Right. I didn't have the name. I didn't have the, you know, the And it's not easy to climb it's it all easy. by yourself. No, yeah. and it's really expensive and very yeah. time consuming. So I wanted to pay it forward and I wanted someone to have a better experience than what I did. I suffered. Mm. I really suffered. Mm. And I'm proud to say that I suffered because the new generation now have it a little bit easier yeah. than us. Yeah. Than my than my generation, the mm. first. Um, so I wanted to go back and kind of like pass the torch, <laughs> which is so fantastic. And kudos to you for doing Thank that. You. So now we come to the very first question of the podcast, the star question, as I call it. You've been around to eighty two countries, still counting. But where will you be taking us on a journey today? Imagine mm -hmm. you're standing ankle deep in crystal clear waters. And they're this beautiful azul, beautiful like turquoise teal. Mm -hmm. The temperature is perfect. There's fish everywhere. And it's one of those places that not many people have been or explored. And it's not the Maldives. It's not the Caribbean. You have some of the nicest people in the world, incredible culture, and a deep-rooted love for hospitality. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking you to no other than my hometown, oh. my backyard of the Red Sea. Oh my God, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Lately, they've opened so many incredible hotels. Yeah. 
One of them was on the Red Sea, mm -hmm. where I grew up. Mm -hmm. I always say that, like, I have sand, I, I have, I have sand in my bones and seawater in my veins. It's an incredible and beautiful part of the world mm -hmm. that doesn't get enough justice. So that I, is true. If that I can so take true. you anywhere, I would take you to my hometown in the Red Sea, in one of the islands that have been developed into hotels the last few years. That's where I take you. So you know, you just said that it's not open up opened up to the world as much and people kind of I mean now we see a lot it's opened of, up now it's, it's opened up but, but it's people not don't known. know much yes yeah. exactly people don't really choose it as a destination because it's stunning there is still awareness it's still happening but if on the podcast today you were to tell people to go to your home country Saudi Arabia as a first time visitor what would you ask people from anywhere in the world you know where would you ask them to start their journey in Saudi Arabia first land in the capital mm -hmm. because it has uh, the most international flights also mm -hmm. my city has international flights but it's good to land in the capital see the historic area in the capital Murabba, where the old fortresses are, the history of Saudi Arabia. Mm. That's very nice to start there. And so that's, then that's, uh, Riyadh, Riyadh, the capital. Yeah, yeah. Basically the historic yeah. you know, part. And then you would fly to Jeddah, my hometown, where you have beautiful Red Sea, mm -hmm. incredible fish uh, dishes, very colorful. And then you would go from Jeddah to Ula, which is the historic area that has the old Nabati and the old uh, buildings similar to Petra and Jordan. Mm -hmm. It's the same people. They just lived in Jordan and they buried their dead in Al Ula. It's the same, it's the same tribe, it's the same people. Oh. But once upon a time, there were no countries and they used right. to There roam. were no borders. There was no borders. So yeah. They used to roam and they used to hide their dead in Al Ula. So there are big mo like mausoleums and big buildings to dedi dedicated to their dead. Oh. And they lived in Al Patra. They used to hide them in Al Ula. That's really, really beautiful. That's a lot of history there. Oh, it's incredible history. Yeah. So if you can, I would say these three main cities are give you a little slice of the different parts and the di different. Of course, there are other cities that are mm. really gorgeous, like the, the north, the, where the mountains are, or the this south. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, or the yeah. south, where my father's from, where mm. they're very, very colorful. Men walk around with flower designs on their hair no way which is gorgeous yes and where my father's from in the south in jizan it's on the border between saudi and yemen gorgeous wow. very very green very lush and the thing that ties all of these places together and why i love my home my country so much is the incredible deep rooted love of hospitality mm -hmm. incredible yeah the, the arab hospitality at its finest is in saudi arabia so and still unexplored i, would I know say. and it's yeah. still it's still not it doesn't have as much attention as other places but mm. I, i'm telling you that give it next you know less than a decade it's going to be one of the top locations i'm sure but yeah. you know what should people really look forward to you know you've just mentioned these places that you know that's how they should start the journey mm. but you know in saudi arabia what should people really look forward to you know because what we talk about in the region we talk about jordan we talk about lebanese and we talk about lebanese food yeah. palestinian food what is it so special about saudi arabia that you know has not been highlighted so far good question besides the beauty of its typography and besides the amazing food it's the incredible people mm -hmm. really unfortunately there's a really weird and wrong mis misconception about saudi people saudi mm -hmm. people are lovely they're hilarious as well they're very very chill and very uh very funny and they love life and mm. you know they're they're a different kind of uh different kind of attitude so i think it would surprise you how nice and kind saudi people are that's beautiful. And isn't that so special and amazing that, you know, travel does that, you know, when you open up doors, like for the longest time, Saudi Arabia was closed, right? Yeah. Now, because it's opened up, you just get to know about this incredible culture yeah. and then incredible people that Saudi Arabia has all around. And, you know, people can go there, travel and explore and experience this beautiful people and culture of yeah. Saudi Arabia. So I think it's so amazing that they've opened up now. So, and I'm glad you said uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, because that's a first on the podcast. Uh, so yeah, definitely. I think uh, I'm the, looking forward to going there as well. And there's something very unique because many countries that were closed and opened up have a language barrier. Mm. Saudi Arabia has a big population that speaks English as a second mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. So it opened up and it can communicate with other people. Mm -hmm. Which is fantastic. So it just opens up the doors even more. Without the hindrance of no language. Exactly, exactly. You know, communication. Fantastic. Saudi Arabia then. Yes, the that's, next, that's yeah. my location. I yeah. totally will surprise you.
Perfect. So, you know, now let's talk about uh, treks and trails. I know you love treks and trails and I know the Inca Trail is particularly special so to special. you. So tell us why is it so special to you? I it is a long Inca journey I to go it. all the way. It's super long and I suggest it to people all the time mm. because it's one of the trails that you can do, absolutely do in comfort. Mm. <laughs> absolutely. Mm. There's a lot of lodges. Yeah. There's a lot of options to go from point A to point B. There's there's cars, there's trains, there's buses, there's horses, there's donkeys, there's walking on your own. To, so it has so many different options mm. and it's very, very well established. Mm. So you can you have a wide range of budget it fits many pockets right it's the same reason why i really like nepal mm. because it also now it's very very well established the the ever space camp trek for example mm -hmm. is very very well established it has different options and different trails but i would say that nepal is a little bit more advanced because of the high altitude as opposed to the inca trail is not as not as high mm. and not as long i guess i would say but the Inca Trail, just the food in, in, you know, in Peru was just incredible. Yeah. The food in the lodges was just amazing. So, you know, is it the cultural aspect of it or the surrounding or the people? What is it that, you know, keeps pulling you back? Everything, there? the people, how, you know, I, people would just walk around and sing. And they were so kind and accommodating to me, yeah. very polite, very warm and just, nice people you know i just i love that the, and the inca trail is so diverse and very beautiful it keeps changing every day and then you have of course machu picchu mm -hmm. as a as a reward and as a gift when yeah. you get to the top of the the inca trail so it's quite it's quite special and i think anyone who wants to start hiking or do trails should go to do the inca trail start there first. yeah because you can do it in luxury you can do it in comfort so that stands out to you, really. Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, you have all these different experiences, but what is that one unforgettable travel experience that you have? Look, I have, I'm so fortunate to say that I have many mm -hmm. incredible experiences. And I might go with the most recent one. Sure. Because it, it's still, I'm still left with a profound, deep sense of wonder. Okay. And it's definitely meeting the Himba tribe in Namibia. Oh, that was an incredible surprise. Okay. I didn't realize that they lived in such true depiction of their, of their ancestors. Mm. So the, the Himba people, the Himba tribe are semi-nomadic people that are in Namibia. And they have a very distinct red skin color where they take the okra rock and they mash it mm -hmm. with animal fat. Oh. And, and they color themselves red. And they have a very distinct hair system for women. So when a child is born, she starts getting little baby hair. She gets one braid in the front when she turns one. And then when she turns two, she gets two braids in the front. And oh. so on and so forth. And they're all facing front until she becomes a young lady at 16 or 17. Then the braid goes to the back and she can wear it like an adult. It's incredible. Wow. Oh incredible. my God. And then they start wearing. So this is only for the women. For, for the, the women. Because I sat with the women and I, right. I heard a lot about them. And of course, in most cultures, women are more colorful than, yeah. than men. Yeah. But in the animal world, men are more colorful than the females. Right. The males are more colorful than the females. And then they have like a belt around mm. their waist. Mm. And that belt is cloth until she has her first child. Then it is beaded. You get a beaded cloth. And the only part of shame and let's say they need to cover the only two parts that they need to cover are the belly button to the upper thigh and the ankle everything else is not shame to be shown in public wow. so they are nude from the top and they only cover this part and the ankle and they they put such emphasis on hair mm. and hair health so the the healthier your hair the, the prettier the, you are the, pretty, the more the more fertile you are oh so they they put such emphasis on hair that it's in, it's incredible like the old ladies were touching my hair and they were they were the translator was translating mm. really really beautiful culture very very interesting they're also not monogamous polygamous so okay. the ladies ca can have multiple can partners. have multiple partners 
they have their do- their own rules and their own system and it was so so it's a matriarchal society it's then. a matriarchal society okay so it's it's quite fascinating and they live together in like a round um, amazing yeah so they still have a very strong culture and cultural very ties culture, yes. and that's very very important to them very yeah and you also mentioned that namibia is a very complex country it's to cover. gorgeous it's gorgeous but because of the vastness and how big it is mm. you really need to go with a very good provider right because you need to fly from one point to yeah, the other so it's, yeah. it's not the easiest to go around if you don't have a good good plan yeah and you go all the way and because it is so complex you might as well get the most out of it Absolutely. so it's better to have a trip to Namibia planned properly, properly. rather than yeah. unplanned. It's stunning. And they have the Skeleton Coast and yeah. then they have the, the, the Himba tribe and then they have the savannah where the, the, they have the wildlife. Very, very unique desert lions, mm. which is a very unique type of lion. Oh. Desert lion. Okay. Which I also... So there is a lot to really there's see There's a lot to Namibia. see, but it's just big distances. So make sure that you have a good, good, you know, planner. Right. Huge distances. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about your all-time favorite destination. Give us one <laughs> special destination that it, you absolutely love and adore. Very, very difficult to choose. But yeah. if I have to say the country that I've been to the most mm-hmm. is as an indicator of one of my favorites. And maybe I'm biased because one of my best friends is from there. Mm-hmm. Is definitely Hispania, Spain. Uh-huh. Okay. I speak a little bit of Spanish. Okay. And I love the people. They're just such... Nice and chill yeah. and incredible They're people. fun people. Spain, They're fun yeah. people. They have amazing food. They have such a big variety in their country mm. from mountains to, to, to beaches, to cities, to mm. old cities. So you can go to Spain every year for summer and discover something new. And there is so much to, you know, experience so there. Like you said, Islands. the food is just so delectable. I mean, you know, delicious food and lovely. The regions are different from one part to the other. But which is your like favorite part of Spain? Ooh. That's difficult to pick, I it's know. Very but to pick. you know, where would you like when you if you had to go like pick up your bags and go to Spain tomorrow, where would you aim at going to spend like, you know, some time? One of the islands. Mm-hmm. Off the coast of where Ibiza is, not Ibiza, uh-huh. but because I don't know what that area is called. So in in the south, there's Mallorca, Mallorca Palma de Mallorca, yeah. and in the north above it, there's Ibiza. So mm-hmm. one of the islands there. Mm-hmm. So one of the little islands there, because there are so many smaller islands that are not touristy, yeah. that, that are have amazing prices and amazing food. Mm. That's where I would go. Okay, so Spain it is then. Spain. So, you know, now we've spoken about all these lovely experiences and the great places that you've been to. But then, you know, things happen when we travel. Yeah. So tell us about some of your travel bloopers, experiences, anything that has happened to you that you look back now and laugh at it or look back and like, oh my God, that happened to me. I have so many of these. Some of them I can't say publicly, but... But we can speak of some, I'm sure. One or two, perhaps. But the one I I think I can talk about because it was just really, really odd Mm. was I landed in the country Mm. and they they didn't believe that the visa was real. Mm. And I was held at gunpoint. And you don't want to tell us which country it was. And I was held at gunpoint. You were held at gunpoint. So they, they they had security with guns. You know, right now, like I'm sitting in a room on my own at at immigration, oh and they my had God. with big guns, like on my left, left and right, and I keep telling them that you know I this is a real visa. It was hilarious because it says in their document in their you know every every port has rules, right? So it says GCC visa okay. not required, E visa or visa okay. on arrival. Okay. It says, yeah, and I'm telling him I'm GCC, and he's like, no. I'm like, I swear Saudi is GCC. And he's like, no. So that was very odd. And they kept me for hours, hours. Like oh I was falling God. asleep. I was really tired. But I have a great attitude in these situations. I was very chill. I was sitting down. I was acting very docile and very friendly because that's the best way to handle. Don't act aggressive. Don't act mean. Just try to be like calm because you never know and then happened. they let you go finally and then finally there was a language barrier as well mm. so there was it was very difficult to communicate but finally in the end i got uh, passed and went so now can we know one of your hidden gems which oh. is that one hidden gem of yours that you're very reluctant to give away i'm not reluctant to give away i'm mm-hmm. happy to give away okay. because i think this country is so underrated mm-hmm. 
I've been twice and I want to go again because it's... I'm dying to know now. What, what a gem uh-huh. of wildlife, kind people, incredible food and culture. And it's no other than Botswana. Botswana to me is one of the most underrated, stunning locations I've ever been in the world. I've been twice. Mm-hmm. The first time I went, it blew me away and I fell in love and I said, wow, this place, especially in the Okavanga Delta, mm. is superb in terms of the animal life. And I'm sorry. And it's easy to get to Botswana. Botswana it's not it's very pretty, complicated. Yeah, the yeah. visas, you know, have improved. Mm. It's online now. When I went, it wasn't, but now it's online. Mm. That's the first time I went, I was like, wow. And I'm like, don't get too excited. It's, it, maybe it might be a fluke. Mm. And then I went again last year. It's not a fluke. That country is stunning. The people, the culture, the, the amazing hotels they have there and the wildlife. Like, it's very rare for you to go to a place that's that lush. Mm-hmm. You drive every 10 minutes and you, and you find something interesting. And that's how rich and incredible Botswana is. So I advise anyone if you get a chance to go, to absolutely go. To Botswana. And how many days would you think, uh, or a would week. you say a week? Mm. So do not go for less than a week if you want to really explore and experience. Depends on which country you're flying into. Mm-hmm. You must fly through one of the countries, neighboring countries because there aren't many direct flights. Okay. For example, if you're flying from Dubai, you must fly through South Africa. So make it worthwhile. Mm-hmm. I think a week is very good. Okay. And you say that... A week is a must because there is so much to explore and experience. There's so much to explore and you want to relax and you Mm. want to enjoy. You know, now I want to go to my next question. And, you know, all of us travel and there are people, especially from the part of the world that we live in. Many people travel. Many places are accessible for people to travel. But... I think a lot of us also forget the situation that the world is in today. Yeah. So, you know, responsible travel kind of comes in, you know, in our lives. I mean, I, it's something that we should look at. So as somebody who travels so often, do you do anything for responsible travel? And what is it that you do if you do? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I, the minimum is highlighting the place I'm going to mm-hmm. and shedding light on it as a, as a destination mm. so that it increases its tourism footprint and so on. That's the that's the. Let's, as we say in our Arabic, al-Iman, like the, the, the tier one of what you can do. Mm. The second thing I do is when I go, I try to leave it in a better condition than when I found it. For example, if when I went to Maldives for the first time, I went and I found a turtle sanctuary and I adopted a turtle, for example. Mm-hmm. When I went to Uganda for the first time, uh, me and a group of women uh, came together and built a little shelter for women, street kids who didn't have a place. So as much as you can, it doesn't have to be as complex as this, but try to do something different. Try to Mm. do something different. When I went to Kenya, I adopted one of the the chimpanzees that were saved. And it doesn't have to be a lot of money. It just has to be something that you're you're putting you're putting in a positive thing in the world. Yeah. You know, someone like you who travels so much, what do you think is um, a destination that people should definitely look at traveling in 2024? I would say a lot of Latin American countries. Peru was incredible. Bolivia is very beautiful as well. So I would say Latin America. But if you want to do something different that's close, then maybe I would say Montenegro mm-hmm. was really a nice surprise mm-hmm. as well. Easy to get into yeah. from, from the region. You can go with your... A lot of connecting countries to Montenegro as well. Super. You can do Croatia. Croatia, Montenegro, do, yeah. yeah. But it, it's a nice, cute little country that you yeah. can go for a few days Correct. and come back. Like yeah. it, you change your mood. So yeah, there's a lot of options like that. But personally for me, I miss the further part of the world. Like I miss Latin America. I'll, okay, so that, that's what my, my next question was going to be. Of course, you've done so many countries, but there are still a few countries in the I'm, world that are left. I'm working on it. Yeah. So uh, what is on your travel bucket list right now? Japan. Mm-hmm. Japan is on the top of the list for okay, sure. Okay. Japan is, I think, up there in terms of where I want to go. Yeah. 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 But Japan is beautiful. And I've never been. You've never been? No. You will love it. You will love it. Give me tips. Yes, I will, for sure. And you should go with time in your hand because there's so much to I know. explore. No, no. And I have said this before on the podcast, but the Japanese people are one of the nicest people That's on what I earth. Hear. Yeah, they are so good. I mean, language is kind of a problem. They don't understand what you're saying because most people don't speak uh, English. 
but they are so nice. nice their hospitality their warmth they just warm people you know even if they can't explain something to you they'll actually hold your hand and show it to you yeah they're very nice you and then of course go. the caribbean but i'm saving that for when i hopefully one day get married so that's a complete no you will i'm sure you will go and to all another these story. places and um yeah with that we come to the end of the podcast Thank there's you, so much Raha. to say right i know there is so much to say but we just have that much time for i have a question podcast. for you though go on What's your number one go-to country now? If you want to, if you can snap your fingers, something that I haven't visited, you haven't visited ever, ever. Where it's Peru. It's right Peru. Now. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, it's I'll Peru. give you. I'll give you the name of the company I went with. Please do. This was years ago, and I've heard that they've really developed now. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous. Yeah. But thank you so much, Raha. My thank pleasure. you for joining us on the podcast today. I hope you go to all the places that you want to go to, lots of countries in uh, Latin America and definitely Japan. Hello. Wish you I'm all putting the it best. out there in the universe. Japan. Absolutely, Japan. it's going to happen. Hello. Wish you all the best and thank you for joining us today. Mm. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let me know what you thought of today's episode. Until the next time, safe travels and keep exploring. Mm.